So today we're in Hanoi and we're reading Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, text number 15. We'll read the Sanskrit first. Yam yanti ete. Yam yanti ete. Purusham Purusharshaba. Purusham Purusharshaba. Samadukha Sukham Diram. Samma dukkha sukham diram. Somritat vaya kaupate. Somritat vaya kaupate. Yam hina vyata yanti ete. Purusham purusharshaba. Samadukha sukham diram. Somritat vaya kaupate. Yamina vyata yanti ete. Purusham purusharshaba. Samma dukkha sukham diram. Somritat vaya kaupate. Okay, others can chant. Yam hina vyata yanti ete. Purusham purusharshaba. Samadukha sukham diram. So mritat vaya kaupate. Yam hina vyata yanti ete. Purusham purusharshaba. Sama dukkha sukham diram. Somritat vaya kaupate. Christine, you want to try? Yam hina vyata yanti ete. Purusham purusharshaba. Samadukha 
Samadukha Sukham Tiram Somritatvaya Kaupate Very good, yeah. This Sanskrit, Sanskrit comes from, you know, English language comes from Sanskrit, you know. All the European language, all the European languages, they all came from Sanskrit. Yeah, even Latin and Greek, they also come from Sanskrit. Sanskrit's the mother of languages. All right, we'll read the synonyms. Uh, yam, one to whom? He, certainly. Na, never. Vyatayanti, are distressing. Ete, all these. Purusham, to a person. Purusha Rishabha, O best among men. Sama unaltered. Dukkha in this distress. So come and unhappiness. Diram patient sa he amritatvaya for liberation kaupate is considered eligible Eligible. Eligible, yeah. Eligible. Eligible means you're, you're, you're worthy, you're qualified to get it. And if you're eligible, uh, un, uneligible, uneligible means you're not qual you're not going to get it. Eligible means, you, you know, there's a good chance you can get it. You can be considered for liberation. Okay, translation. O best among men, Arjuna, the person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress and is steady in both is certainly eligible for liberation. So Arjuna is described here, best among men. Lord Krishna is speaking to him. Arjuna, of course, is a very great person. He's the son of uh, Indra, the king of heaven, and he's born in the womb from the womb of Kunti, who is a very noble lady, very great lady. So Krishna is encouraging him, calling him best among men person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress. Now, of course, we get, people get very disturbed when we're in distress, oh, we lament, and when we're happy, our happiness, we rejoice, we feel so happy, we, we dance, and we're so pleased. So, but Krishna is saying, we should not be disturbed, we should be steady in both. 
means we shouldn't be affected by happiness or distress. We should control the mind. And when we are steady in both, then he said, certainly eligible for liberation. Certainly can be considered to get liberation. Right? That's the idea. Purport. Anyone who is steady in his determination for the advanced stage of spiritual realization and can equally tolerate the onslaught of distress and happiness is certainly a person eligible for liberation. So Prabhupada makes the point, determination. We have to have some determination. It's very important. We want to achieve anything. That determination is required. Determination, right. Determ that you, you want, you're going to, you know, you have a lot of, uh, you want to do something, you really, and you're really determined to do it. I'm determined I'm going to chant 16 rounds today. I'm determined I'm going to wake up early in the morning. <laughs> what? I'm determined that I'm not going to get angry anymore. Christine? Christine, you listening? Are, are, are you determined not to get angry? Oh, very much it is. It's, it's determination. If you're not, you have to have that determination. Otherwise, you'll give in. You'll give in to your anger. you let, you get so angry and you slam the door and then you shout and say bad words and even fight, <laughs> hit people, you know. So we have to have some, we have to be determined that you want something very badly. You want to do something, you want to achieve something, you want it very badly. So you will try your very best to do it. So this is determination. If you know something is wrong, you know, if, you are, if we understand that anger is really not very good, sometimes I get more angry than is required. Then, I, you know, we should think about it. We should think, I should be more determined. Okay, anyway, this, here we're talking about determination for advanced stage of spiritual realization. Spiritual realization. We, what do we want to realize? We want to realize what? What is that spiritual realization? Yes, that I'm not the body, that's one, that's the beginning stage of spiritual realization. To understand that I'm not the body, that I'm a soul, it's very important. Of course, there's higher realizations, you can go on after that, right? What's after that? After we realize I'm not the body, I'm a soul, then? Yes, we have to go on and realize I'm the part and parcel of Krishna. Okay. And then, after that? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, this is spiritual realization. So, for the advanced stage of spiritual realization and can equally tolerate the onslaughts of distress and happiness. So we have to be very tolerant because these things are not very pleasant. Sometimes distress, you know, oh, I'm so, I'm so unhappy, but, you know, somebody's in great distress. 
and somebody else is very happy. Why should we be careful about that? Why, why should we not get carried away and rejoice or lament? You know, we become so happy or so sad. Oh, I'm so sad, I'm so unhappy. My girlfriend left me, I don't have a girlfriend anymore. Oh. Or we're so happy, I got the job, I made all this money, I'm very happy. So why should we be careful about these things, that we should tolerate them and not get disturbed? The reason is because they are temporary. The happiness is not very, doesn't last long. And the same with the distress. It's not eternal. For some time you may be unhappy, but then happy, happy day will come. And the same with the happiness. You, get, you may get great success, you win, you, win the, you win some money or something, you feel so happy, but it doesn't last for very long, very temporary, right? So we, if, if we want to be eligible for liberation, we have to tolerate happiness and distress, not get onslaughts, just mean taking place, what's taking place, when it takes place. Just, you know, when it happens, it, the, when you're in distress, tolerate that, that period, you know, it's indicating that it, it, it's not a very pleasant thing. We should be cautious about rejoicing and lamenting, because we know they're not eternal. So don't get too much, tr don't be too much, when you're happy, you should know it's not going to last forever. Remember last week we gave the example, what was the example last week, Christine, do you remember? What did we, Yeah, in the winter we have to take bath, right? We have to bathe or take a shower. And so we don't, we don't avoid these things. We tolerate, as you said, right? V very good, right? Tolerate the heat and, and winter comes, winter is not going to last forever. After a few months the winter's over and the summer comes then. The seasons change. The same way, happiness and distress, they're not eternal. Happiness comes, distress will also come. Distress will come, then happiness will come. So don't get affected by them. That's the message of the Bhagavad Gita in this section. Srila Prabhupada continues, in the Varnashrama institution, Varna Ashrama is referring to the division of society. In the past, society in India was divided according to Varna, which means occupation, and Ashram, which means uh, spiritual duties. So Varna, there is a Brahmana, the intellectual class, there is the managerial class, there is the business class, and there's a the worker class. Those are the four varna. And ashrama, there are the sannyasi, there are the vanaprastha, there are the, the grihastha, or the married people, 
and there are the single people, the brahmachari, like that. So, Prabhupada says, in the Varnashrama institution, the fourth stage of life, namely the renounced order, sannyasa, is a painstaking situation. Right? I'm a sannyasi. I'm in a painstaking situation. You think you're having a hard time. Sannyasis also have a hard time. Right? But Prabhupada says, one who is serious about making his life perfect surely adopts the sannyas order of life in spite of all difficulties. The difficulties usually arise from having to sever family relationships, to give up the connection of wife and children. You know, I don't have wife and children, so I didn't have a lot to give up. But if anyone is able to tolerate such difficulties, surely his path to spiritual realization is complete. Similarly, in Arjuna's discharge of duties as a Kshatriya, he is advised to pers persevere. You know the meaning? To persevere? He's advised to persevere. It means he's advised to, to keep doing it, not to stop, not to give up. Keep doing it, persevere, just like you want to learn something, maybe you want to drive a car. So you have to learn, you have to practice, you have to practice, you have to practice, and finally you learn, right? You have to persevere. You try and try and try, and gradually, one day, you do it. So he's advised to persevere, to keep doing his duty. Arjuna's duty as a Kshatriya was difficult, even if it is difficult to fight with his family members or similarly beloved persons. Lord Chaitanya took sannyas at the age of 24 and his dependents, young wife as well as old mother, had no one else to look after them. Yet, for a higher cause, he took sannyas and was ready in the discharge of higher duties. That is the way of achieving liberation from material bondage. Okay. So Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada is explaining to us here about how there are difficulties in life. Prabhupada was talking about the difficulties in sannyas. Prabhupada himself, you know, Prabhupada who wrote this, Srila Prabhupada is my teacher and the founder of ISKCON. So he wrote this book on Bhagavad Gita and he was a family man. And he had a wife and he had five children. But he left them to become a sannyasi. So he's describing, maybe this could say, you could say this is like his own experience, that giving up the family is sometimes quite difficult. You have a wife and you've lived with the wife for many years and you have children with her and then you, naturally you have a, a duty, a responsibility to the wife and to the children. And to take sannyas, even though Prabhupada took sannyas in his old age, his children were grown up, but, but still he was concerned about them. He was worried about them. So, however, one who tolerates the difficulty, they tolerate the difficulty and go on with your duty, then, then you get, you make a lot of uh, spiritual advancement. Prabhupada says, if anyone is able to tolerate such difficulties, surely his path to spiritual realization is complete. 
So we want to complete our spiritual realization. So we have to develop this tolerance, very important quality here, which is being mentioned. Tolerance. Lord Chaitanya, in his Shikshastikam, Lord Chaitanya, Christine, Lord Chaitanya was, he was a great devotee. He appeared 500 years ago, Lord Chaitanya. He was a person who appeared 500 years ago in India. And he, he taught, his teachings are very important. So there, there is one, uh, eight verses which he wrote called, they're called Shikshastikam. And the third verse, in the third verse of his, of eight verses, the third verse says, one should be tolerant like a tree. Can you understand how a tree is tolerant? Give shade to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. What do we get from the tree? You said we get shade. Anything else we get from the tree? Yeah, the roots of the tree are very strong. Not all trees, but some trees. But a tree will give they're very, they're very generous. They give flowers and fruit, right? They give that, they give these kind of things sometimes. Not all trees, but some trees. You know, generally, you get some trees, they give fruit and flowers, and they give shade, and we get wood also for fuel. The branches fall off, and we can use them for fuel. So we get a, a lot from the trees. They're very... They're very kind, right? But what do people do with the tree? People come and they cut the trees. They, they come with a big saw, a chainsaw, electric chainsaw, and they will cut down the tree. They'll cut everything off. And then you just want to get make the money, sell the, sell the wood. So, that, and what does the tree do? The tree just tolerates. It's so tolerant. It tolerates. Oh. Haribo.